Hello and welcome to the Christ Baptist Church devotional. We're going through the book of Genesis. And, uh, we've gone through Genesis chapters 1 to 39. And now we find ourselves in the book of, of Genesis in chapter 39 with the story of Joseph. And Joseph, we know, is one of the 12 sons of Jacob. Just showing that God is faithful to his promise to Abraham. And he'll eventually develop his descendants and descendants of Abraham as the seed is, or as the sand is on the seashore. And so Joseph is the twelfth uh, son of Joseph, or of uh, Isaac, or excuse me, of Jacob. And uh, we find that he just had some problems with his brothers. And they couldn't get along, and so the eleven brothers all conspired against Joseph, and uh, tied him up, threw him into a pit, and then sold him to some slave traders. Ishmaelites that were coming through to Egypt. And Joseph found himself traded off to a family of uh, a high-ranking official named Potiphar, who was uh, chief official there in Egypt. And just because of really the temptations of Potiphar's wife, who really was a wicked woman, and she kept trying to tempt Joseph, and Joseph kept running away from her, that she accused him then of attacking her and uh, Joseph found himself in jail, but he was always under the favor of God. And what we're going to see here is that even though circumstances today seem to be going against you, and, and it seems as if God has forgotten you, He is still working, and it's for the, the appropriate plan and time for things to happen. And we're going to see the first part of this, which is going to leave us in a bit of tension until we get to chapter 41, where we're going to see exactly how God's plan unfolds in a great way here so that God shows that he is faithful to his promise. Well, let's take a look here. Genesis chapter 40, as we go, just looking through the text of Genesis. Then it came about after these things, the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. So the king of Egypt, he had a person called a cupbearer who would actually pour his wine and taste his wine and give it to him. And then there was a baker who baked all kinds of bread and cake and all those kind of things for the, for the king. Pharaoh was furious with his two officials, the king cupbearer, the chief cupbearer, and the chief baker. So something about what they did really made the, the king, made Pharaoh very, very upset. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the bodyguard in the jail, the same place where Joseph was in prison. Again, we see God's hand at work as he's moving the pieces in place. That's what God does in our life. He's always moving the chess pieces of everything around the world so that you will get to where you need to go. And he's doing that with every single person. But here we see the story of Genesis. It's showing how he is faithful to Abraham, how he's taking care of Joseph for a very specific purpose we'll see in chapter 41. Well, the captain of the bodyguard put Joseph in charge of them and he took care of them. They were in confinement for some time. We don't know how long that time is. It's, it's quite a while, though. Then the cupbearer and the beggar for the king of Egypt, who were confined in jail, both had a dream the same night, each man with his own dream, and each dream with his own interpretation. So on the same night, the very same night, they had a dream. They each had their own dream, and they're trying to figure out what that means. And when Joseph came to them in the morning and observed them, behold, they were dejected. Remember, Joseph is in charge of the prisoners, even though he himself is a prisoner, because God had favor upon him. And that meant, when God has favor on him, that means all the other people have favor on Joseph as well. So he's concerned now about this cupbearer and baker. And he asked Pharaoh's officials who were with him in confinement in his master's house, why are your faces so sad today? Then they said to him, We've had a dream and there's no one to interpret it. And here Joseph again, in the midst of his difficulty, when he thinks God has left him, he, he has no reason to believe anymore, it's just his life is shattered. Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell it to me please. He, he knew all along his God was with him. He's known, even in the pit of despair, even in the midst of this Egyptian jail, in prison for something he didn't do, sent to Egypt for the treachery of his brothers. And he said, don't interpretations belong to God? I mean, I, I, I don't just throw it all in and take a, a, a view that I only look at myself and the world revolves around me. He didn't do that. He still understood God was worthy to be worshipped. 
who was his God, and he made him known there in the prison. Don't interpretations belong to God, he said. So verse 9, so the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, there was a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches, and as it was building, or as it was budding, its blossoms came out, and its clusters produced ripe grapes. Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office, and you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand according to your former custom when you were his cupbearer. So we see the dream, and we see Joseph telling the interpretation of it. Now we would have to understand from essentially verse 8, he said, don't interpretations belong to God? This tells us that when he heard the dream, God revealed the interpretation to him, and he knew that God had done that, so he explained it. So basically, the dream was there was a vine in front of the cupbearer, meaning a, a, a grape vine was in front of the cupbearer. And on the vine were three branches, and so it, it quickly blossomed, it had fruit coming out, and uh, there were a lot of ripe grapes. And so Pharaoh's cup was in his hand, so he took the grapes, squeezed them to Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. So he basically gave Pharaoh a bunch of, of grape juice there. Joseph said, when God had revealed this interpretation to him, three branches of three days, and within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to office. In other words, you're going to please Pharaoh in three days. It's going to happen. So that's why there's three branches. So, that, so Joseph didn't just make this up. He understood that interpretations belong to God. So that was what was revealed to him. But now Joseph he also was concerned, and he had his, his own motive. And, and even though he interpreted what God said, he said in verses 14 and 15, he said, Only keep me in mind when it goes well with you, and please do me kindness by mentioning me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For I was in fact kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I've done nothing that they should have put me into the dungeon. I mean, he, he, he now finally shows I mean, his, his frustration. And he says, when you get there, just make sure you tell Pharaoh, I was the one who interpreted the dream, tell him that, uh, just mention me, that I should come out of the house. Now, why should I come out of the house? Well, that's when he, unfortunately, says what every single person in prison says, which is, I'm not guilty. And he gives his story there. He says, I was kidnapped in the land of the Hebrews. I've done nothing that they put me in the dungeon. Here I am. So just tell Pharaoh, Mention me to him, tell him this is unjust. In his own way, he's trying to get out, but he doesn't know what God's doing behind the scenes. He really doesn't know. And in his own way, he's saying, let me, let me just give you something that will help, get, help me get out of prison. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but he doesn't know what God's doing behind the scenes, and so God, God actually realizes that will frustrate God's plan, that will actually counteract God's plan so God stops it from happening. We'll see how. Well, verse 16 tells us now about the baker. When the chief baker saw that he'd interpreted favorably, he said to Joseph, I also saw in my dream, and behold, there were three baskets of white bread on my head. And in the top basket there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh, and the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered and said, this is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Same thing. Three, three. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and will hang you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh off you. Oh, man, that's a much, much, much worse interpretation. But of course, what he did with the, the cupbearer is he, the cupbearer ended up taking grapes and squeezing them into Pharaoh's cup. So he was giving to Pharaoh. In this dream, it's pretty clear. He's got, there's three baskets of bread on his head, but then here come the birds and the birds are all eating this bread off of this basket. And so he said, that's not a favorable interpretation. Joseph answered and said, this is this interpretation. Three baskets of three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and will hang you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh off you. That's going to be a horrible ending. Because that's what the birds are doing. They're eating. Well, no more commentary on that. I'm sure the baker wasn't real happy. But he got his interpretation. But on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all the servants. 
He lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among the servants. So he brought them out of prison and said, okay, these are the good guys. He restored the chief cupbearer to his office and he put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker just as Joseph had interpreted to them. And so it happened exactly as Joseph said. And we don't know why he was upset at the baker. We don't know why he restored the cupbearer. They were both in prison for something that he infuriated the Pharaoh for the king. But he brought them out after three days, and that dream indicated that, but it was exactly as Joseph had said. But yet, now we see God's hand in verse 23, who is basically stopping Joseph's request, because Joseph's request is not in the will of God. Joseph's request to this cupbearer is not going to help advance God's promise. So you know what happened. The chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. He didn't remember what Joseph said. God carefully helped him forget so that God's plan would work out in time. And this is what we have to really understand is God is always working, always working. Romans 8, 28. He makes things, all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things, all chess pieces are being moved into place. We can try. We can try to get the, the cupbearer to remember us. We can try to, to do things, but if God, that's not God's will, he's going to move things around so that his will takes precedence. And we trust him because he's a good God. And we're going to see in chapter 41 exactly what God's plan is. But God's plan right now is to keep Joseph in prison for longer. It's not a punishment. There's a need. And the need is this. God knows exactly what's needed, and he knows when it's needed at the right time. Oftentimes we want to get out of a situation, or we want something to happen, and God knows it's not the right time. Maybe it'll help us temporarily, but it will hurt us later. It causes us to depend on that rather than God. There's all kinds of things. God is, is strengthening us. He's maturing us. He's working with us. And he knows the right time for when things need to happen in our life, just like he did for Joseph. And he is right there in control, supervising everything that's going on in Joseph's life, even though it's tough to think that Joseph still is stuck in prison. Well, we haven't got to chapter 41 yet. And we're going to do that when we get to the next devotion. So here we understand God is still working even when things look very, very dark. It's important, like Joseph, like Joseph, we remember. Don't interpretations belong to God? It's important that we remember the God that we serve, even in our darkest times, because he is working on our behalf to get us to the place we need to be when we need to be there. That's what's so important. We're going to see that in chapter 41. We'll see you there on the next devotion.